Good morning. Let's take a look at the major leagues yesterday and some of our two and a half goal angles. Premier League, chock full of goals yesterday. A bit shy at the moment, though. Aston Villa yesterday, good call in the live stream. I didn't quite get to it in time, but I have warned you in the past, Aston Villa's away scoring. They're starting to score two plus goals away from home. Of course, we had the cloud of post-international pre-European club competition. Villa involved, Tottenham involved. That just clouded the enthusiasm. Everton yesterday again in the live stream. I did mention the nil two. Everton have been scoring two goals against sides far more accomplished than Ipswich uh, and their odds pre-match. Not even favourite. What a steal. Man United, as ever, totally untrustworthy. Couldn't uh, fathom that. But 1.6 at home. Conceded the first goal. Did go on and equalise. Newcastle, insurance paid out there. I was expecting a both teams to score angle. But a great result for Brighton at, Car at uh, a very difficult place to get three points from. Southampton Leicester, another great shout in the live stream. I was shocked that I didn't follow through. Uh, I saw the 2 0. And he mentioned to live stream members to lay Southampton. Why? Two newly promoted sides, both of them will psychologically feel that they can beat their opponents. So a 2 0 lead, very vulnerable. Do take that on. Take on any 2 0 lead, I think, in these derby, in these uh, promotion battles, newly promoted battles. Take on a 2 0 lead. Take on a 2 0 lead pre-Champions League as well. So with Bologna, which we'll come to. I think it was yesterday or, or maybe it was Friday. But uh, some sides certainly struggled. This was a very good performance from Lance and it was there in the in-play stats. You get the first half goal. Certainly any Saint-Étienne lead, very, very vulnerable. Paris Saint-Germain, pre-Champions League, post-international. Going to be affected, of course. Likely to have rested the big guns. Or did they? Mbappe normally was rested first half, at least pre-Champions League last time out. Was he in the lineup today? No, he wasn't. So that's, of course, he's playing for Real Madrid. <laughs> so completely ignore me. Not enough sleep, obviously. Great result, 4-2. How did the match unfold? No real trading angle. Paris Saint-Germain scoring again first after 15 minutes. So you could have gone over two and a half goals first half or second half. Up to you how you play that. Up to now, 70% over two and a half goals this season for the Bundesliga. Look at that. Wow. Any trading angle? Well, I think Eintracht Frankfurt scored first against Bayer Leverkusen. We could have gone first half goals, two and a half goals as well, which is something I showed you in the live stream. So if you want to attend the live stream, you're going to get extras. Uh, you're going to get uh, out-of-the-box plays. You're going to get value plays as well. Could have got something like 80-odd uh, quid at uh, two and a half goals. We did get a goal from Frankfurt late on, but at 1-1, one, one, you're out. Great stuff. Scoring first, I decided to go the neutral route because it was pre-Champions League. But again, Boniface delivering the winner. Florian Wirtz coming on. They did make some changes. Uh, some of these... Big boys were rested. Schick as well. Schick and Wirtz would normally get 90 minutes. That is purely down to post-international, Polish international, pre-Champions League. I think Polish international, Schick as well. Uh, Florian Wirtz, German, I think. So that encapsulates the concerns that these managers have. Coming off the back of an international, got to make necessary changes, but we're in a spot of bother. It's only 1-1. We've got to win. Bring on the cavalry. Bayern Munich, impressive. I must say, Stuttgart have impressed pre-Champions League. Leipzig, a bit like Man United. Don't know what to do with them. Hoffenheim, another goal before half-time, as is the usual case with the Hoff. That's what you expect. Very good performance from them yesterday as well. Como and Palmer laid the late draw. Like Southampton and Leicester, two newly promoted sides will be fancying taking three points off a fellow struggler. Guess where Bologna are playing next week in the Champions League. That's what I'm talking about, taking on a 0-2 lead early enough as well. They're just going to potentially make some changes with it in the bag. And then they fall foul of Pinamento. Uh, great performance from him yesterday. AC Milan, 
another typical pre-Champions League performance, isn't it? Just scraping over a 1-0 win. Very unconvincing indeed. Getting your reindeer sent off after 29 minutes. Santa Claus will not be happy with that one. Juve and Lazio, a bit too much of a derby-style match, this. Both sides involved in Europe. Good performance from Juve, but the red card obviously changed the match hugely. And Lazio, unlucky to get away with a 0-0. Uh, a late 85th minute own goal would have been absolutely soul-destroying for them. In the Eredivisie, again, it's one of those over two and a half goal leagues. And look at that, all of them overs. Uh, any potential upsets? Well, FC Twente against RKC Valvik. 1.4 favourite pre-match. 2-1, possibly uh, one to take on with Van der Water and Margaret. Uh, great names uh, for Valvik's players. A very, very late 91st minute uh, saving of the blushes for FC Twente. Feyenoord, easy as you like. PSV, Derby style match against AZ. Sparta and Almir, we did make a profit on. See if you can spot the angle. And this I had to do. We had our live, uh, our in-play stats down yesterday. So this is a, a way for you to still get the in-play stats. It's at soccer24.com or flash score stats here. But of course, this is nowhere near the required detail you need to trade properly. You don't have the goal times either. You can split it first and second half. And as you can see, second half thoroughly deserved to win. You had the opportunity here with Sparta, and I like to give you these opportunities to decide whether to stay in or not. This is the scenario I decided to stay in. £51 potential Sparta profit. Why? Half an hour to go at 2-2, scoring two second-half goals within 10 minutes or 15 minutes of the second half. Logic suggests that. But with the uh, Middlesbrough play being a losing play yesterday, I did give you that option in the Sparta match. So that's our initial play. Lumpan 40 liability, backing at 8.8, .8, laying at 1.4. This was at 2-2. I would have recommend, or I think in hindsight, recommend taking that £29 green screen rather than that loss of 10, given the fact you had a loss earlier on. When you have that in the trading session, hoover up your greens, as your mother used to tell you. They'll make you big and strong and at least stop the old heart palpitations, of course, waiting for that third goal. So those are your options at exit. I do like to put that loss on the draw for you to keep you involved or even a loss on Almir, but a profit on the draw to keep you involved, to stay in for that 53 quid. But when you have a losing session, hoover up your green screens, please. I think that's a key element, isn't it? So good result there for Sparta. Those were the main leagues yesterday. Spanish La Liga as well. Kicked off a bit late. Athletic and Bilbao were absolutely outstanding. No trading angle there, alas. This is when the stats feed started going down. I couldn't make head or tail of these late matches, and this was far too late for me. Was it a come from behind? Post-Champions League, post-international for Real Madrid. No Kylian Mbappe scoring in the first half. That's a rarity for the Frog. Scoring in the first half. He's normally your second half go-to man, Kylian Mbappe. Uh, a real show of intent from Real Madrid yesterday, playing Mbappe at the start. Normally rested. So that was some of the main plays yesterday. We did play England, English Championship, League One and League Two, but it suffered from our in-play stats feed going down. So it did blunt my ability to trade properly yesterday. Did get this late on. This was an odds-on favourite, nil-nil at half-time. Back over one and a half goals. It was a late, late show. That one there, that single goal there, actually produced a 86p green. I had to take it because I would have been waiting for that Millwall goal or waiting for a £40 loss. So the goal came far too late, but the underdog scored the goal. That's why you're getting a green screen at 78 minutes, I think it was. Uh, quite amazing. 78 minutes. There we go. First goal, backing over one and a half goals beginning of the second half. You can see why this appeals to me. You've got, you've got a lot of leeway here. As long as that one goal is scored, a single 
a singular goal is scored, we are okay. Did the same with Bolton yesterday. You can look at their pre-match odds. This is a kind of match I like to target. 1.34 odds on favourite at home. Rock solid. 1.69 for over one and a half goals at the beginning of the second half. That in itself is a knock on the door to you that goals are expected. So what I did yesterday here, again, the advantage of you attending the live stream, you see these thinking aloud in the live market. With 1.69 for over one and a half goals, I went over two and a half goals beginning of the second half. Just over evens, you can see, £40 liability, £84 profit. What I experimented with was backing over two and a half goals, laying over one and a half goals. Your only problem score lines would be a very late 1 0, that kind of thing. That would kill you. Yeah. Well, no, it wouldn't. You'd have that covered. So 1 0 covered, but the, the problematic score line will be a late 1 1 because you'll have a loss there. Will you have enough time to cross the line here for the over two and a half goals? But it did come in. So that's something to look at in the future again. If you get odds on about over one and a half goals at the beginning of the second half, possible goal fest to come. So English League One, League, League, League Two really suffered uh, from an inability to follow the in-play stats. But I did, again, in the live stream, give you this Carlisle equaliser. Bottom of the league. But this is a redemption-style match for Carlisle. Having such a poor time of it, why on earth are they suddenly 1.92 at home when they are effectively bottom or near about near the bottom of the league? Second bottom. Why are you odds on favourite when you're second bottom or bottom? Take the hint. Market's expecting them to perform today. Indeed, they did. Came from behind against Harrogate. Bradford, again, was another trade. But again, lacking the in-play stats to confirm whether Bradford could come from behind, which indeed they did. So we suffered big time from a lack of in-play stats yesterday. If that's the case today, I'll have to scrap the live stream. In-play stats are a vital tool for the trader. Yesterday was a superb advert for it. And you can look at the live stream yesterday, see how I coped with it over at YouTube. Go to the live section and you can re-watch elements of the live stream. Put it up to 1.5 speed or 2 speed and you'll see some trades in action. Okay. Plenty of information there if you want to improve your football trading. On to today, Wolves of Man City, post-international post pre-Champions League Man City. They don't tend to fall foul, do they? Ordinarily, Liverpool and Chelsea, Liverpool odds on, uh, but I wouldn't be taking odds on about Liverpool. This is post-international pre-Champions League. The last time Arnie Slot had post-international pre-Champions League, he lost 1-0, 0-1 at home to Nottingham Forest. Chelsea, arguably for me, are far more accomplished than Nottingham Forest. 1.6, I wouldn't be touching that with a barge pole. French League uh, looks a bit tough today, but I would be favouring Lyon, or at least I would have this on my shortlist from a trading perspective if Le Havre score first. They could be vulnerable today. Lyon on the improve. I've done the French League uh, research for you, so do look into it if you want to focus on it. But it looks like a tough league today. Probably one to just choose your odds on favourites in. Marseille involved in Europe, I believe, as well. Bundesliga, 70% over two and a half goals. You know where to start there. Werder Bremen normally see goals before half time. So we'll be looking at that one. Italian Serie A, Napoli under new management. So do not take any of last season's nonsense to heart. Antonio Conte has given them a good kick up the old Antonios. And they are now defensively stout and starting to perform at Napoli. So certainly a side to begin to trust. Venezia Atalanta would certainly be on my shortlist today. From a trading perspective, newly promoted at home. It's one of the big boys, Atalanta. It's would be fascinating. Probably too tough to call uh, Inter and Roma. pre Post-international, pre-Champions League for both of these teams. I think Roma. I'm not too sure, but certainly Inter. Lukewarm away from home, because this is a potential banana skin for Inter Milan. Probably going to be a one-goal in it match. 
at these unique weekends. We saw how many one goal in it matches there were yesterday for the very strong pre Champions League sides. Ajax tend to deliver. Heracles, newly promoted a couple of seasons back, along with Pex Voller. Certainly worth following at half past one, but the live stream will start at 2 pm. Mallorca Vallecano, well, it's down for over two and a half goals in my list. Uh, to Mallorca, a very tough side to trust for over two and a half goals. Pre Champions League, Atletico Madrid have been caught with a 1 0 loss at home in the past. Pre Champions League. Do watch team news as well. Got to make sure that the big guns are out. That's for sure. Those are the main leagues. Of course, we've got a whole raft of others. Austrian Bundesliga, etc. And in all cases, got to be very careful with these pre-Champions League, pre-Europa League, pre-Europa uh, pre Conference League. You looked at Antwerp in the Europa League. No, Anderlecht in the Europa League, losing to newly promoted. Uh, a couple of sides yesterday struggling. Ghent, Genk, I think, are involved in Europe. So watch out for them. I'll be on hand from two o'clock today for the live stream. I hope you can make it. As you saw yesterday, you get a lot more in the live stream, a lot more calls than you would get in the Telegram, a lot more speculative, i.e. big reward calls as well, which I like to point, point out to you, backing at odds of 13, that kind of thing. Uh, imagine if you'd have followed up in the live stream when I mentioned taking on Southampton 2 nil up. Leicester pulling off the 2-3 win. You could have backed Leicester at a high of 70 or 80. That's at absolute highest. Probably 20 is more realistic, but you've still got the win there. So it might pay to come along to a live stream if you can. It's for members only today, 2 p.m. start. I hope you can make it. Tennis-wise, well, let's just have a quick look at the tennis. Tennis at this stage of the season, for me, Tends to be something you take on these odds on favourites. Been dropping down like flies. A lot of these players, like uh, Minor, coming off the back of injury, do read these previews. They will unpack players to lay. Uh, we've got the usual crowd cocking things up, like uh, Elise Mertens recently. De Minor, you can see struggling, coming off the back of an injury at 1.14. These are there to, to be got. He dropped the first set at 1.18 in his first round to be got. And this bloke sits a pass. At this stage of the season, he's just there uh, for a tour of Antwerp, I would suggest. Not to be trusted. Definitely layable. And the market knew as well. So at this stage of the season, odds on favourites are eminently gettable. Very short priced favourites. Uh, I think we had Elise Mertens at some point. I don't want to labour the point, but you're trying to find her. There we go. Elise Merton's here, retiring. Uh, she's had those injury concerns as well. 1.2 favourite, possibly gettable after the first set. So there's plenty to take on odds on favourites at this stage of the season. But main focus, of course, will be on the football. See you from 2pm onwards for a live stream.